Okay, see so how prep. Uh, here's the finish of that uh, video from last time. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about making a box plot, and then we're going to talk about these outliers a little bit. All right, so, um, so uh, suppose you just plotted the minimum and the maximum, and this is the minimum and maximum for these uh, commuters. And, um, you know, I'd say, uh, are those outliers? And you go, I don't know. It depends on where the other data is, right? It depends on, you know, is it all spread out nice and evenly? And then they're the high and the low, but they're not necessarily outliers, not necessarily bizarre. And, um, and so that's one possibility. Another possibility is, um, is that they are outliers and there's lots of data that's really spread out. So we'd have to see some more stuff. That's why we'd put the five number summary in here. Well, that's also why the range isn't a very good measure of spread, right? Because you don't know what's going on with the rest of the data. And so, um, and so the five number summary is a way to summarize a set of data and that's the five parts to it. The minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. It's kind of like zero, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%, you know, like going that much through the data. So I could plot those points too to help me understand. So Q1 uh, was, uh, Q1 was uh, 12, and the median was 20, I remember that, and Q3 was 40. And now when you look at it, now you can kind of start seeing, well, maybe that 110 is an outlier. You know, it kind of kind of looks like it. So um, this is a way to, to display a summary of the data, just showing these five numbers. Now, uh, John Tukey, the guy who uh, made up this uh, box plot thing, he said, well, let's, let's make it a little more graphically interesting. You know, that's kind of the interesting part of some statistics works. It's just how do we display this in a way that helps people understand it? So what he did is he said, let's, let's instead, let's make a little box around that middle 50% of the data. So that's going from Q1 to Q3. And so this is the middle 50% of the data right here. So the, the typical kinds of scores, you know. And, um, and then on the median, he just put a vertical line there. That's the box in box plot. And then, and then he just extends it on the outside to those two data points. Uh, he actually called it a boss, box and whiskers plot. He was kind of a whimsical guy, so uh, a box and whiskers, uh, you know, like a cat whiskers or something. And so, um, and so he'd make a box plot like this. But the interesting thing is this 110 here. Like, is the data all spread out all the way through there, or is or is the 110 you know sort of off on its own? The the whisker doesn't really show you whether that's an outlier or not very well, and it doesn't show you where the rest of the data is. So we're going to show you something a little bit different that we're going to do on this. I have to change one thing. So, um, sorry about that. So, so what, uh, so what Tukey decided was, he said, let's, let's decide what, where the outlier border is. And so this fence that we calculated earlier, that's the border and anything past that is going to be an outlier. So up to 82. So 82 is route right there. And so we can see that this point is definitely an outlier because it's further away. Um, the highest point above that was 60. And you only extend the whisker then to the last non-outlier point. So 60 wasn't an outlier, and then there's nothing all the way up to 110. And you see how this is a little more descriptive. Now we look at 110, we go, whoa, yeah, that's really far away from everything else. And we can really see that... that um, that you know, having the line extended all the way through would make me think there were a bunch of points here, and now I can see, no, no, it's just, it just goes up to sixty, and then there's one guy with this really long commute, and um, and so that's more descriptive of the data. So this is a box plot, and the cool thing about it is that it divides the data up into four sections still. So remember, you have 25% of your data in each section. So there's 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, 25% all the way past uh, 40. And remember, it's about, because that whole, do I, do I include something when I'm calculating the, the quartiles? Do I include the median? Do I not? Um, and you know, what if something's on the border? So we say about 25% of the data is in each section of the graph. So keep in mind what that means is, like when you see a wider section like this, that doesn't mean there's more data there. That means that there's, that the data is spread out among that range. 
Whereas this small little section means that there's 25% of the data packed in right there. And you can remember the original graph, you can look at it, look at it on your notes, and you're, yeah, that was where there was a bunch of data all kind of packed in. So a big section just means it's spread out among that section, but you really don't know where. You know, it could have been a lot of stuff to the left of this and then one to the right, or they could be evenly distributed. You can't really tell shape very well from a box plot because it's just summarizing the data with these five points and that's it. And so anything that's going on between those five points, you can't tell. One little quick thing is that um, AP Stats guy had a funny, he had a funny, he's a funny guy. I, I like him. Uh, he had a funny description of this. He said, imagine you were uh, standing on the edge of the, of the, um, of the box. So you're standing at the edge of the box and you're casting your line out and your line is uh, 1.5 IQRs. That's kind of what you want to think of, you know, whatever this width of that, of that box is, you imagine going 1.5 of those off to the side of it, you know, from the edge of the box. Keep in mind, that means that when you're counting from the left-hand side, you'll go all the way from the left to the left-hand side instead. And so that means you don't measure the 1.5 IQR from the median. That's a classic mistake is to go from the median. You're going from the edge of the box and counting 1.5 IQRs out from there. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much what you need to know about box plots. Um, and they're a nice, handy, really quick description of a data set. But again, very, very summarized. I just thought I'd throw on a sample problem here. Um, here's an example one. Um, and, uh, and so you can read the question and take a moment. You can pause it, read the question. You might figure out what you think the answer is. And then, um, and then we'll kind of go through it. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the answer to this one. Now, one thing to note about this is that remember that the the different sections don't necessarily stand for the same amounts. So, you know, you take a look at this and you take a look at this. And if you just had these two, you know, just look at those sections. So between the median and the third quartile for each one. If you didn't know anything about this data set and the question was which section has more lilies sorry I had a look which section had more has more lilies in 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 that area area then you wouldn't know because the two data sets if you don't know anything about them the two data sets might be totally different amounts i mean this could be a hundred lilies and this could be 500 lilies and or the other way around so just keep in mind that in each box plot that's 25 percent of that data set but that data set might have a different size than another data set the one thing about this one is they did say that there are two samples of equal size. Of two, yes, of two samples of equal size. So, oh, okay, so now we actually know that whatever the sample size is, that, that each one of those sections actually stands for the same amount. So there's the exact same number of lilies there as there are there. It's just in the B one, they're more packed in because the A one's wider, okay? like in general. Okay. Now let's go through the answers. So the interquartile ranges are the same for both samples. No, because the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Uh, so the interquartile range is the width of the, excuse me, the width of the box. Keep in mind, it's not the box itself. So this is not the IQR. It's subtract this. I do it the right way. No, subtract this minus this, and that width is the IQR. Okay? The range for B is greater than the range for A. No, the ranges look basically the same. There's no reason to know that they're any different. There could be rounding, but the ranges are about the same. So, no. There are more petal lengths that are greater than 70 in A. In A, well, that's kind of tricky. I don't really know how many there are above 70 there. Then there are for B. Yeah, no, you, in fact, you almost can say there can't be because this is 25% of the data and this whole thing is 25% of the data. So if you have any points in here, then B actually has more that are greater than 70 and A. Also, it's a little bit off. 70 looks like it's there. So actually, that's interesting. So now the moment I notice that 70 is a little bit to the side of that one, then I can say that there actually are more lilies uh, in B than there are in A because that's going to be a little more than 25% of the data 
but A, it's going to be a little bit less than 25% of the data of some in some way. So definitely no. Next one. There are more panel lengths greater than 40 in B. So greater than 40 in B. So it's something bigger than 25%, but not 50%. Um, then there are for A. There are more in B than there are in A. No, there's... Oh yeah, uh, no, <laughs> no, there there are because it's less than twenty five percent for B and it's more than twenty five percent for A. It's more than fifty percent for A. It's between twenty five and fifty. Boy, I'm 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 flaming out right now. But it's between twenty five and fifty percent for B, and it's more than fifty for A. And so there's more in A. There are more pedal lengths that are less than thirty in B. Less than thirty in B is more than fifty percent of them. Than there are for A. Uh, definitely true. So the correct answer on this one is E. Hope this uh, helps you understand box plots. Hope that you understand the, the inner quartile range, remember subtracting them, and then how we use that to find the outlier. You know, I kind of just imagine you know, that IQR and I say, okay, what if I did one and a half more of those from each end? And are there any points that are past that? So when I look at this one, I can just kind of go and go on time. I can just go, okay, there's there's one IQR ish, just ish here, and then another half an IQR that gets me to there. That's why 82 is where it is. And so I, I could just looking at it, I can spot that um, that there was a high outlier and that there aren't any outliers because if you do just one IQR, you're already past all the data points to the left. If you go to the, I'm sorry, yes, to the left. Um, I'm out of shape uh, in terms of doing everything backwards for students. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta uh, get back in gear. Okay, it's still August. All right, um, we had, went over the fences. We went over what the range is, and all this stuff is about measuring spread. How can you measure spread? You know, if you look at these two two data sets, you could say which one has more spread than the other, and you could say in general, uh, B appears to have more it'd be have more spread in the size of the lilies. Uh, yeah, in the length of the lilies. Um, of the lily petals, um, uh, B appears to have a little more spread. You know, there's more variety in B. It's in the sense that that they're farther away from the medium than there is from A. If you measure with the range, then they're about the same. But if you look at interquartile range, B definitely has a bigger interquartile range than A, and so therefore it has more spread. You know, it seems to be a little more spread out. The data values. Um, there's more variety in how long the petals are in B than A. Um, and so you can see this idea about measuring spread. Uh, when we come, when we have class together, we're going to learn about standard deviation, which is uh, a really important way to measure spread. It's just kind of complicated, and I just why make you do that? I'm trying to do things for the most part that won't generate too many questions. If you do have questions, though, please make sure I'm going to uh, be sending out an email next week with some office hours, or you could just email me if you wanted to to ask me any questions that you have about the. Um, about any of these videos. Uh, I'm just going through it, making sure we covered everything, and also do I have any summary things to say? No, I think that's it. I'm going to add the uh, the other video uh, link to this uh, in just a second. So, um, so that's uh, IQR and um, box plots, and then um, and then when you um, when you go to the next video, the next video is going to go over all the different kinds of displays that we have, and um, and you'll see, it's gonna be uh, a little bit different than this one. It's more just kind of going through them and uh, you'll see it when you see it. Uh, thanks again for your, uh, for your hard work on this. Uh, it's really important to me that, we, that you guys do well and that uh, you learn the material well and stuff. And, and the whole point of starting in August and starting now with a little bit of this stuff that's pretty straightforward is that, um, is that I'm just, it saves us time and it gives us more room to have more activities and more things to help understand the things that are a little bit more weird and complicated. So, um, so I'm hoping it just makes us uh, do better. What the heck? Okay, that's it. Take care. Get ready to turn it off, and um, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.